Uh, everybody who has just began playing Tekken has a lot of questions how to become stronger, how to train, how to win up the games. So, so we'd like to tell you about a brand new mode uh, for Tekken 8 being the Arcade Quest. This so seems what cool. What this is is you create an avatar. If you remember, it's quite nostalgic. The concept is cool. You know, my thing is like, is this com complimentary to the tutorial? It seems like it is, which I like. Even just this, this is done more for getting me excited about Tekken 8 than pretty much any video that they've shown me until now. Just because to me, what it feels like is they're taking it seriously as a title coming out for console and they're loading it with shit to do for a variety of people. That's cool. Honestly, if like this combined with the tutorial, I like the idea of this for new players. Because that was something that was really missing from 7. And it was like, even with as, as in spite of how successful 7 was, for as many people got into the game with 7, you have to think the way that the game was in terms of like missing connective tissue for ultra beginners to get to the beginner level, beginner level to even get to, you know, like low level. It was missing any and all kind of connective tissue for that. It found success in spite of that. So imagine what it, how it would have played out if it would have had those things, you know? That's the way I think about it. But this is pretty cool. Like, this kind of mode, I think it is good. It, it's like, it's cute, you know? But, like, uh, people need sh a reason to boot up the game other than to, like, play this person. This specific person or something. Isn't this a thing with Smash Brothers? Like, don't you... Isn't this a thing? Like, people buy the Amiibos, you use the Amiibos, and you play against them so that they learn how to play. You raise the Amiibo, and then you can make... You can fight other people's amiibos. Can you make the ghosts fight each other? Though? You know how tight that would be? Imagine if they had like a special TWT event. Ghost regional battles. You register your ghost in the tournament. You just get to see who's, go who's ghost wins or whatever. Somebody could get like some, some prize back. That'd be sick. Ghost only brag. It's saying, that's, that's what I'm saying. We gotta, so we gotta boot up net play. Run into me on net play. Download the ghosts and your Arsenal Nash too. Is that is that it? It's that simple? They just handed it to us on a silver platter? The ghost shit is gonna be come so good, man. Like, there's gonna be some good shit talk that comes out of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, wait, <laughs> hey, bro, wait till I get your ghost, bro. It's over. When I start tapping that ghost, it's gonna change up. Like, you know, like the ghost is a part of you. You can't, but you you can't even deny it over other people. What happened? I farm I farmed the fuck out of your ghost on that play, and that's why you lost today. <laughs> oh, that's some anime shit. You download Arslan's ghost, you run into him in bracket, you still lose. He's like, that was only my level one ghost. You know, like, God damn. Yeah, I mean, so far it's cool. It's just, like I said, what's missing so far, or I can't even say missing, what they haven't shown me yet, is how like customizable is it? How much dumb shit is there I can do? You know, like half the fun in the SF6 lobby was everybody getting at the top of the stairs and then doing spinning bird kick off into the middle of the thing. The lobby starts lagging and shit. I don't know. That's kind of fun to me. How how much can you do here? You know, the thing is with the with with these kinds of lobbies and stuff, they're a problem when they don't work and when they're boring, when there isn't enough shit. To, because then it's just like, well, fuck it. If, if it was just gonna be my mean fighting this person, it should have just been a menu thing. Yeah, and yeah, you could say that then. But when there's more shit to do, that becomes an attraction point. That becomes something fun. Okay, the thing is, like, the Strive one, in theory, should have more of that stuff, but it just doesn't. They only have, like, the little ball you can hit. Like, there's nothing around it. Shit like that can work. It can be really fun if there's stuff to do with it. So, I, I, obviously, this isn't for, like, competitive-minded people. Like, you know, they don't give a shit about it. Don't think about it as a fighting game. Think about it as a game. Because you gotta think about when this game is coming out and what it's coming out around. This game's gonna be released the same weekend as You Got Gotoku 8. So, you gotta think. If you're somebody with 70 bucks and you have to pick between that or this, if it comes down to it just being like you're looking at it as a fighting game, the average person is not going to look at it that way. They're going to be like, oh shit, I, like this game's got all these mini games, got this, this, that, and that. When that's your competition, you got to do, uh, you have to have other stuff in the game that's going to like be attractive to people that aren't necessarily trying to beat me in tournament. Get to the good shit. Online battle. Three battle modes are playable in the lounge group, quick and ranked. Each with battle and spectator options. I'm guessing group is like a lobby. Quick is just quick match, and then ranked is ranked. Uh, then there's also a group match where uh, there's a, a bunch of arcade machines, and uh, they're separated into groups, so you can. Oh, it's like. Okay, that's cool. I like. Honestly, that's not that bad. Honestly, that's okay. If I have to give up infinite rematch 
for the best of three, I'm cool with it. Does this mean I have actual training mode, not fake training mode? Yeah, I don't give a fuck. This shit, this shit is an objective W. Obje like this alone made the made the shit way better already. This seems good. I'm glad that like some of the changes that they made so far, just to like this aspect of the game. These are like objective pluses. I, 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 I dude, I'm I'm hyped for the fucking best of three. Damn, we can actually play. <laughs> we can actually play the game. Insane. To be honest with you, up until now, I something in the back of my head is I've been kind of concerned or worried about this game. Just because I, I talked about it a little bit earlier, but I think from January, I'm probably likely playing this in uni as main, like mainly focused on them until further notice. But this game, to be honest with you, a lot of the gameplay stuff to me so far, it felt like rather than it start from like, oh, we have a new idea for what we want to do with Tekken. It was shit. People want a new Tekken. Let's just think of some shit real quick and do it. Like looking at the way some of the systems, like the way heat and shit. The way heat and rage are together, it feels like a, it's like it's too, it's kind of weird. I don't know. What I'm happy about is that at least so far, it seems like they've, in spite of that uncertainty, they've taken a lot of things around the game that aren't necessarily specifically gameplay stuff. And they've taken it really seriously on building the package up around it. the way the net play looks and everything like that. This presentation to me so far has done more to get me excited than like any character review. And during the replay, there's prompts when they find something you can improve on. In this instance, uh, your your aerial juggle was low powered and you can do more damage with a more optimized combo. Plus R actually uh, added this in one of their updates after, the, after it re-released with rollback. You get hit by something. You don't know what the fuck happened. You're like, what the fuck was that? Being able to boot up the replay from that point and problem solve actively from that point that was one of the most ingenious and like ingenious, clever, insert good praiseworthy word there, really valuable resource tool for being able to just get better at a game. When you get your ass beat by something, you don't even know what happened and then you can actively problem solve it. That shit's sick. And they're pretty much just putting that in Tekken. An improvement over what they had in 7 with the, with the suggestions, but actually just taking it a, that step further and just saying, fuck it, boot it up from the replay, grind this shit out. This is good. This saves so much time because let's say like if it's a new character or a character you don't know, right? That you're fighting against your like, whole shit. Like what, like what did I get hit by? What was that? Think about what the normal process for pro trying to problem solve that is. It's like you have to go into training mode with that character, do shit until you figure out what move that was or commandless browse until you figure it out. Then you have to set up the dummy. Then you got to do this and you got to do that. This is like a huge time saver tool on being able to get the answer that you desire or being able to set up the stage for you to find that answer. This is a really good addition. That's one of those features that to be honest with you, I feel like every company that makes a game, if they haven't yet, they should have notice of it. This is what I was talking about. It's like, even if the gameplay, I'm still kind of unsure of about in some points, this to me is the kind of shit I was talking about where it's like building up the package around the game. This kind of feature is such a huge time saver and really good at helping specifically mid-level play. I'd say even like mid-level players, maybe even more so than beginners, mid-level players or like upper beginner level where you're trying to like, you're starting to learn against like character matchups and character strategies and stuff like that. This is a huge time saver in that regard. In this particular instance, this is sick. From a low parry and we want to carry them to the wall and do the rage art. So we've saved that particular situation. So way more like situational drills and stuff like that. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I'm I'm happy they did a lot of this whole presentation. Honestly, I don't know. I feel like this is the wrong place to do this. I feel, I feel like this was what I wanted to see at like TWT final or some shit like that. They could have done some corny shit here, you know, and it would have hit just the same. Like these are all features that I wanted. <laughs> Hey, why they got her Fortnite dancing like that? Why, did, bro? I like this character. I, I think I like her actually. My thing is, do you have options at when stance activates, or like, is it just set to do like a step left, or is it set? Like, can I? Do I have the option of choosing a right or left or whatever? You know. I feel like this character is going to get annoying to watch after a while, too, because of the way the screen freezes when it happens. The animations are really good, though. She, lo she looks visually, like, very cool. That's one of the things gameplay-wise is, like, there's a lot of stuff in this game that either 
freezes the screen or it's like it's intrusive to match flow you know that i'm kind of worried about and i feel like over time they're gonna have to rethink because some of this stuff like like rage and drive were already bad enough but then you gotta heat you gotta heat this thing like god damn dude, it's a lot so just uh when you're in the, when you have i like her man just pushing the triangle button Forbidden Impo, Hidden Art. Alright. Rare footage of me thinking a Rage Art looks cool. That one doesn't look that bad. Will it look cool after you've seen it 10,000 times? Probably still, yeah, probably. The thing is, like, some of them are just a little too long, you know? Anyway, this presentation was sick. This was the best Tekken 8 presentation I've seen so far. This show me like got me way more excited for the game than anything I've seen up until now. This is basically to me, for me personally, I'm not telling other people what to think. I'm just telling you what I thought. To for me personally, this presentation got me more excited about the game than any presentation they've done for Tekken 8 until now. And I mean like not even joking around. It's kind of sad that it happened at a TGS on a day with like on a business only day. I felt like this was a could have been a lot more you know exciting. It's really refreshing to see them take a lot of the issues that Tekken 7 had with the game as a package. Set the gameplay aside. They were really focused. It's, it, this came through really clear on this presentation. They were really focused on addressing a lot of the weaknesses that Tekken 7 had as a package with regards to Tekken 8 when it came out. That really shows on the back end and uh that to me is is really encouraging to see i'm really happy with it but uh let me know what you guys think in the comments below i'll holler at y'all later